Hi guys, this video is going to be about similarity and congruency. Now similarity and congruency occur in all types of shapes, but I'm only going to talk about similarity and congruency in triangles because that's the only thing we really look at. So let's look at what similarity actually means. Similarity in triangles means that the triangles aren't absolutely identical, but the one is an enlargement of the other. So there's two ways to prove similarity, one of them being the most common. And the most common way to prove similarity is to prove that the triangles have the same set of three angles. Now the second way to prove similarity is that the triangles have sides that are in proportion. Now we'll talk about what that means in our next slide. But the most common way is definitely through number one. Okay, let's look at congruency. Congruency means that your triangles or other shapes are absolutely identical. So exactly the same sides and exactly the same angles. Now in a triangle, there are four ways to prove congruency. Firstly, there is side, side, side. That means that you're able to show that the same three sides occur in both triangles. The second way is through side, angle, side. So two sides and an angle. But most importantly, this can't be any angle in the triangle. It has to be the angle between the two equal sides. Thirdly, you could do side angle angle. Now, the catch in this example is that you have to always prove that the side is in the same position in both triangles. So, for example, in these two triangles, the given equal side is opposite the x. So, it's the same position in both triangles, and that's what needs to happen. And then lastly, there's right angle hypotenuse side. So, if you have a right angle and the hypotenuse are equal in each triangle, and a random other side is equal. Your triangles are congruent. Okay, so let's look at an example of similarity. So we have triangles, we have triangle ADE and ABC, and we have a set of parallel lines. And the question says, prove the triangle ABC is similar to ADE. So first thing to note is that those three vertical lines mean similar. Now the most common way to prove triangles are similar is angle, angle, angle. And this is clearly the way we're going to have to do in this example because we don't know anything about the side lengths. Now first thing you need to be very careful about is the way in which you label these triangles. If the one triangle is ABC, the other triangle has to be labeled in the same order. So by this I mean that angle A must be equal in each of these triangles. Angle B must be equal to angle D and angle C must be equal to angle D. So every angle has a partner in the other triangle. So this often gives us a hint as who's meant to be equal to who. So let's highlight our triangles. There's little triangle, which is ADE, and big triangle, which is ABC. Now how we start every single similarity and congruency proof is you have to say in triangle, and then the triangle you're working in, and the other triangle. Now, the first thing that I'm going to notice is that angle A was common. Now how I noticed that is when I was highlighting my triangles, I went over the same angle in each triangle, and that was angle A. Secondly, angle B and angle D are equal. Now you've got to be a little bit careful, because I can't call that angle D, because there's two angles at D. So I have to call it ADE, and that reason would be corresponding angles, DE parallel to BC. And in the same way, angle C is equal to AED, corresponding angles DE parallel to BC. So I've just shown that they're the same three angles in each triangle. So I can now make a conclusion. The two triangles are similar because of angle, angle, angle. So every similarity proof looks like this. An introduction, three lines, and then a conclusion. Okay, let's look at a different example. This question says prove the triangle PQR is similar to STU. And there are our two triangles. Now in this case, I've given you the length of the sides, which means chances are we're not proving angle, angle, angle. We're probably trying to prove the sides are in proportion. Now what does that mean? To be in proportion means that the one triangle is a certain enlargement of the other triangle. So each of the sides are the same times bigger than the smaller triangle. So let's start. In triangle PQR and STU. Now the first thing to recognize is whose side is the part, in, in the little triangle, who, which side is partnered with what side in the big triangle. So let me show you what I mean. What I mean is if you look at PQ, his partner in the big triangle is ST. Now how do I know that? You know that by looking at the names. 
You see, PQ was written first and ST was written first. So those two would be partners. So in the same way, PR is first and last. So his partner would be ST because that's first and last. And then QR would have a partner with ST. So it's very important to be able to tell which side has a partner in the other triangle. You, to know the two pairs are really, really important. So let's have a look. If I compare the blue pair, so PQ compared to ST, what are those lengths? That was 2 centimeters compared to 6 centimeters. So that ratio was 1 third. Now what that's actually saying is the one side is 3 times longer than the other side. Now let's check the green pair. PR compared to SU, that was 1 centimeter compared to 3. And the, R, the purple pair, QR compared to TU, was also 1 to 3. So what this is trying to show is that the big triangle is three times bigger on all the sides. Now the moment you know that it's all of them are three times bigger, that means they're in proportion. So if one of these wasn't a third, it wouldn't be in proportion. Each side has to increase by the same factor. So my conclusion is therefore triangle PQR is similar to STU. And my reason is my sides are in proportion. Now example two is not a very common way to ask similarity, especially in grade 10. Example 1 is the most common way. Now let's look at example 3, which is a common grade 10 question. It says, determine the length of AB. And there are two triangles, and you'll notice there's some angles that are given equal. So angle A is given to angle D, and angle E is given equal to angle B. And then you have some lengths of the sides. Now, the easiest way to prove similarity is angle, angle, angle. And I already have two angles equal. So my red angles are equal and my blue angles are equal because they're given equal. So my purple angles need to be equal in order for me to continue. But they weren't labeled equal, so why would they be equal? Well, let's put numbers to this. What happens if the red angle was 40 and the blue angle was 60? That means in both of those triangles you have 100 degrees in total already. But in both of these triangles, the angles in the triangle have to add to 180. So this automatically means that the purple angles would both have to be 80 degrees. So what I'm trying to say is that once you have two angles equal in each triangle, the third angle is automatically equal. Because the only way the angles in the triangle can add up to 180 is if the third angle is also equal. So in actual fact, you don't need three angles in a triangle equal. You only need two and the last one you get for free. So let me erase these angles because they were just an example. So let's look at this, these two triangles. Here's our introduction. In triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Now you've got to make sure you name them in the right order. So notice I started with red angle in both triangles, then blue angle, and then purple angle. So firstly, angle A is equal to angle D given. Angle B and angle E are equal given. And now we have to explain why our purple angles are equal. So we say angle C and angle F are equal. And our reason is sum of angles in a triangle. You're trying to explain to the person marking that you know that they're only equal because both triangles have to add up to 180 and the original two angles are already equal. Now you can make a conclusion. In triangle ABC, oh sorry, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, angle, angle, angle. Now the thing with similar triangles, is once you've proved they're similar, you know that they have the same three angles equal, and a word for that is equiangular, but you also now know that the one triangle is an enlargement of the other. These triangles are in proportion, which means if you compare each side to its partner, it always has to be the same. So for example, this question says determine the length of AB. So AB, who's his partner? Now you can look at the picture. AB is the side from red angle to blue angle. So his partner would be DE. Now if you look at it in the names, I find it easier to look at the names. AB comes first, so his partner is DE. Now have a look, we know what the length of DE is, so this is going to be helpful. Now where is there another set of partners? Well AC I've highlighted in greed green and I've highlighted DF in green. Now how do I know they're partners? Because look at where they are in the names. AC is first and last and DF are first and last. Now why have I chosen those two? I've chosen that pair because I know the lengths of each of them. 
Now, being in proportion means if you compare AB to his partner, that must be equal to AC compared to his partner. Now, the reason for this is triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So, once you've proved they're similar, you know that this proportion is equal. Now, let me fill in what I know. I know DE is 9, and I know AC is 4, and DF is 6, which means the only thing I don't know is AB. So, I can multiply by 9 on both sides, and I get AB is 6 centimeters. So, this is the most common way of asking a similarity question in grade 10. They ask you to prove similarity using angle, 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 and then to use this knowledge of ratios in order to find the length of a side. Now let's look at one example of congruency. This question says prove triangle ABC is congruent, so you'll notice the sign is different. It's not three vertical lines, it's three horizontal lines, so it's congruent to ABD. So here are my triangles, ABD and ABC. Now, first thing you'll notice is that I'm giving you that angle C and angle D are both 40, and that CB and BD are equal. So this is starting to look very promising. So let me highlight my two triangles. Now, the moment I highlighted, I noticed that I went over AB in green and in blue. So I noticed that that side was common, which is very good. So I started to feel that this was already finished, because don't I have two sides in an angle? So isn't this SAS? Now, the most important thing to realize is this can't be SAS at the moment, simply because the angle is not in between the two equal sides. So we need something else. Now, this is a little bit of a sneaky example, because the big triangle is an isosceles triangle. There are two equal angles, and so the sides opposite those equal angles are also equal which means I now actually have two different ways to prove congruency, because I now have all three sides equal, which would be SSS, or I could now do SAS. With my, high, my AC, my red sides equal, I could now do red sides equal, the 40, and the orange line equal. Now I'm just going to decide to go with side, 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 just because it's easier. So in triangle ABC and triangle ABD, firstly, AB is common. Secondly, CB is equal to BD given. And thirdly, these sides in red are equal to each other because they are sides opposite equal angles, which means I can make my conclusion. My triangles are congruent because of side, side, side. Don't forget you could have done side, angle, side. Now, the thing with congruency is once you've proved congruency, there's a lot of stuff that you now know. So, for example, as a result of this congruency, you now know that the angle A's at the top are equal to each other. So CAB would be equal to DAB. And if you wanted to use this, you would have to give the reason that ABC is congruent to ABD. You also know that the angles at B are equal. So CBA is equal to DBA for exactly the same reason. Now you actually even know something more important than that. Those angles at B are adjacent angles and they're on a straight line and they happen to be equal which means you actually know that they have to equal 90 degrees because of angles on a straight line. So the nice thing about congruency is once you've proved it, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you now know which could be useful to follow on in the question. So in similarity, once you've proved they're similar through angle, 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 you know a whole bunch of stuff about their proportion. And in congruency, once you've proved they're congruent, you know a whole bunch of stuff about which side is equal to which side and which angle is equal to which angle.